Getting back to the on ice product. Sure. Um, as far as the comments go, obviously the the start is historic. Sixty three years, blistering yeah. out of the gate are the comments right now atop the entire ECHL. How much a product of the schedule are they? I guess I'll play devil's sure, advocate a little sure. bit because uh, if you take a look at their schedule thus far, you're talking is really heavy against a couple teams, three teams really, yeah. that aren't going to be playoff teams. You're talking about they've got 15 games this season against Kalamazoo, nine against Evansville, which is something we'll talk about. They're, it's a mess right now down in Evansville. And they're already 7-0 against the Indy Fuel, an expansion team uh, that will finish last in the North Division. So... I'm not trying to rain on their parade or no. snow on their parade, as it were. <laughs> but how much of a product of the schedule are they? Because you want to know how they're doing against a Toledo, a right. team that is a wheeling, a team that maybe they'll see in the playoffs. I can't wait for this weekend. I think these will be three really good games against very good teams. that will give us a good indication. Um, they're 6-5 and five against teams that are 500 or better right now. Now, the only interesting thing about playing Kalamazoo and Indy and Evansville is is the way they've played in those games. They have dominated mm. those games for the most part. Um, that was what was encouraging watching them early because it's like they weren't even, these teams weren't even close. Um, and, the, and Kalamazoo scored first in almost every game, it seems like, against them. And the comments like, eh, that's no big deal. We'll just kill them. And they go out and do it. I mean, it's, it is very much a product of their schedule. But you didn't know it until now and when the schedule kind of mm. like the thing. Um, so the schedule tightens up a little bit now. They play Toledo more at home. They haven't played them at home only once so far. The problem is they got rid of a couple of uh, games against Toledo to bring in Missouri from the Central League. And it's like, man, I'd rather see them play Toledo. Those are fun games to watch. Right. Um, but they go to Florida then, too. Those will be good games. Um, so it gets a little tighter here coming up, which is fine because this team is only operating at about 75% right now. And that's going to shock a lot of people. But they aren't even close to their ceiling, and they know it. Uh, I can't tell you how many times they've come in after a win this year on the road when it's only me there, and they're like, oh, we play like crap, and we still won. I mean, they know it. They know how good they can be eventually, and they're not even close to scratching that yet. They just got their power play figured out uh, 25 games into the season, and it's much better now than it was. Um, They've used seven goalies or six goalies so far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not even close to where they could be eventually. Well, one of the guys that it'll be nice to see back on the ice, Kaylee Schrock, uh, obviously Comets captain. Um, where is he at physically? Because, boy, you take a look at it on paper, you're talking three fractures yeah. in the face, um, in the head, I should say. Where is he at physically? When can we anticipate We know mentally back? he's lost. I mean, he's Well, I mean, yeah, he's absolutely. That's yeah. just I'll pay for that at lunch tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, it comes with the nature of Snyder grad yeah. comments. Yeah. 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 But where is he at physically? When can we really expect him back on the ice? Because he's kind of a, a calming figure, if you will. It's going to be a long time, I think. Yeah. Because he's skating, but he's skating before practice because it's non-contract drill, non drills. You've got to be sure he's healthy. You've got to be sure everything is healed. And even then, he's going to wear the visor coming back. He's got to wear a full face shield. Um I don't think we'll be seeing him fight anymore. I don't know that for sure, but I really don't think it's not worth the rest of your life to have a fight, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be a while. Now, that said, I think they desperately need him. And I'll tell you why. They're, what, 3-2-1 uh, and one since Christmas? That's two games right there that he would have helped them because he needs to be in the locker room helping holding guys accountable, he and, pa and Paul Crowder. They both need to be there. And they're not right now. That's your two best leaders on the team. And it is a team full of leaders, but it's not the same when those two aren't there. One of them needs to be there. they got to get back and get healthy. It's another reason why they haven't come close to peaking yet. They're not even, like I said, 75%, 80% right now. Well, as far as uh, scuttlebutt and things that people like to talk about, Al Sims' return to coaching and return to the bench, what does it mean now that he's in charge in Evansville? Obviously, it's messy down in Evansville. They're not playing great hockey. Um, Four coaches in three years. Yeah, but Al Sims coming back out of retirement after a couple years gone with the Commons. What does it mean? What does it mean for Commons fans? I think he got revitalized coaching a junior team in Ontario. I think that was big for him. But I think he's a, he's a pro guy. He's not a kid's guy. He's not a junior guy. Um, part of the challenge for Al is going to be recruiting because David Franke did all the recruiting when Al was here. I mean, Al did not like that part of it. 
and he's going to have to do some of that. And there's not a lot of great talent there. They're not getting a lot out of their affiliate. Um, neither is Indy. Indy's getting bupkis out of Chicago. It, it, Indy got so excited over having Chicago as an affiliate, and everybody's like, have you seen what they got? They got nothing. But Indy was so excited about it. A bunch of idiots down there, too. Um, but just, you know, <laughs> ugh, crazy. We could, we could go on all day. Oh, oh, man, I'm telling you, it's been fun this year. But it's going to be interesting to see how much energy Al has to put into it and how much he can turn things around. Now, the part of the thing with Al is he's got to have somebody in the locker room. He's got to have his captain running the locker room. And that's a big problem right now in Evansville. So he may have to make some changes that way, and we'll see. I mean, but he will make changes. He won't sit around and say, well, we'll see how this works out. No, he'll go in guns blazing. Final question, what are you looking to see in this road trip coming up this week? Because as you mentioned, good competition, a true road swing. What are you looking to see early on, especially you know Friday night in this road trip coming up? I think the critical factor right now for the Comets is the team defense. That is something they are still working on. It's something they're going to work on all year. But I think by the end of the year, it really could be the strength of the team. Everybody is looking at the offense right now. Well, we all know in the, in the playoffs, and as it gets tighter, defense is what wins, period. I mean, the Comets have proven that over the years. And this defense still has room to grow. They're still trying to figure out some of the partnerships mm -hmm. and things like that. And, you know, you're going to get Michael Tam back. You, you might get Joey Leach back from Rochester eventually. Uh, Michael Tam sitting out there healing from that shoulder surgery is as big a guy as you could possibly get in any trade, and you don't have to give up anything. And he's possibly coming back in March. That could be the ace in the hole for the rest of the season. All right. It should be something to definitely watch. And, of course, we hope you watch Mondays throughout the rest of the hockey season. Blake will be joining us on Mondays talking inside the zone as we talk gays. Off to a fantastic start in the 2014-2015 season. We'll have to see how it all plays out. A lot of hockey still left. It's going to be a lot more fun than last year. So Absolutely. Far. It already has been. That is definitely true. Uh, for Blake this week, I'm Glenn. We'll see you next Monday.